Hey everyone, I tried to do this a few days ago, but it was so hot out that the phone kept shutting off due to the extreme heat. It just won't record. The camera shuts off and it's really rather frustrating. So, so what I'm hoping to do is give a quick update of my vegetable garden. Now keep in mind, I'm not a great gardener. I don't know what I'm doing. This is called haphazard gardening and a lot of hoping for the best and a lot of isn't nature supposed to take care of this without my intervention? Here's the veg garden as it stands mid-July. Okay, there it is. Thanks for watching. Bye. Just kidding. I couldn't truncate the excitement like that. Okay, here, these fuzzy topped things. What are they, gardeners? You know what they are. That's right. It's a row of carrots. Do not call me out on my weeds. I am in here all the time weeding, but they just keep growing back. There we have a little kale plant, and I think that came back from last year's kale plant. I don't recall planting this little kale plant. I have some small tomato plants along the southern border of the garden. I didn't plant any of the tomato plants in this garden. These are all from self-seeding, from tomatoes that fell off the vines last summer, and their tomatoes just lay there in the garden rotting away, dropping their seeds, and grew all these new plants. So some I've transplanted into rows, and some are just all over the place. There are tomatoes just all over the place. Just outside the garden, we have the trap for the groundhog. Our first year gardening, the groundhogs just decimated the garden, and I was devastated. So we have this humane trap. We lure them in with apples. We also catch possums and skunks, and we just relocate them to a friendlier setting a little ways down the road. Now right here along the fence line, I just recently planted some cucumbers. These are all little baby cucumbers that have sprouted up quite nicely. I know it's really late in the season to be planting cucumber seeds, but I figure with global warming, it'll probably be warm into December, so they'll have plenty of time to bear fruit. So along here, we have the smaller tomato plants. Right on the other side of them is the carrots, and then we have the zucchini patch. And I know you're going to tell me I planted the zucchini too close together. Well, when they were seeds and they were tiny, it didn't really seem like they were that close together. I kind of forgot how big the leaves get. But again, it's nature. They'll survive. They had a lot of flowers, lots and lots of flowers. I don't see any zucchini growing yet, but I am confident these are going to bear fruit because there were so many flowers. I have five raspberry plants here as well, and I staked them up because they were growing very long and they were just invading the other areas of the garden. They wouldn't just mind their own beeswax and stay where they're supposed to. So here are two more of the raspberries. That's the biggest raspberry. There's another raspberry with a little friend tomato sharing the tomato cage. The plants have to do a lot of sharing of stakes and cages. Here's something I planted back here. Comment below if you know what this plant is because I don't remember. I wanted to plant cantaloupe and watermelon plants and pumpkins back here and I don't really feel like any of them grew except this one and I don't know what it is. That's kind of my compost pile and right now it's just covered with vines which I find really inappropriate. I don't like that. Okay, little tiny raspberry and behind the raspberry I have some more little seedlings I recently planted and again I kind of think I forget what those are. I think they might be cantaloupe seeds. I'm not sure. Again, who plants from seeds in July? Nobody, but we'll just see how it goes. So here in the back of the garden, we have the concentration of tomato plants. I was in here the other day being eaten alive by mosquitoes, staking up these plants and finding tomato cages and trying to move some around. So, you know, it is what it is. Lots of tomatoes back here. This area is traditionally where my tomato rows have been, so this is where most of the rogue tomato plants have grown up because this is where most of the fruit was dropped and left its seeds. But due to my very poor staking last summer, a lot of my tomatoes just grew as vines along the ground, so they were dropping their seeds 
all throughout the garden. I've had to transplant quite a few little tomato plants from inside this zucchini area. And there's one there that's staked that I just didn't transplant. I just said, hey, you're getting big enough. You're taller than the zucchini. You'll be fine. Just grow up this stake. Due to my lack of having enough stakes that I could find anyway, I have it arranged such that several plants have to share a stake. So they just wind around each other and the stake and they're sharing and sharing is beautiful. And that is why my tomato plants ask you to share this video on social media with all your friends who are interested in gardening. Now I have my main strawberry patch back there with some blueberry bushes off to the left. And the strawberries are done for the season. Of course, that's an early spring fruit. But I have had these bear a second round of fruit later in the summer. So I wouldn't be surprised if they flower again and bear more fruit. I need to get in there to cut off the runners, you know, the little baby plants that the mama strawberry plant sends off. If she puts too much of her energy into taking care of her babies, she doesn't grow more fruit. Sorry my hands are shaking so much as I hold the camera. It's, um... Uh... It's the lack of caffeine, it's causing palsy. I cut off those baby plants and I plant them in other places and get other strawberry patch annexes going. So I did that here in the main vegetable garden and some of these tomatoes kind of have taken over the strawberry area. But here are some baby strawberry plants that I recently transplanted and I think I showed these in an earlier video. I know I filmed them, I'm just not sure I ever put that video up. I kind of transplanted them up onto the compost pile. At first they weren't looking, see look at this, look at this, this is a giant weed, that irritates me. At first the strawberries didn't look like they were doing all that well, but now they seem fine. They seem to have taken hold and they're growing in their new little patch. I hate weeds, weeds really irritate me. How dare you, how dare you weeds come in and try to mess up my garden. We have a strawberry plant right there growing right next to this tomato plant. A couple more strawberries there. So anyway, I need to do more of that snipping and transplanting of the baby strawberries. So here's my greatest concentration of tomato plants. Took me hours to stake these the other day, but I'm pretty proud of it. Here's a quiz for you people who know what you're doing. My tomato plants, some of them have these leaf situations where they're turning yellow with gray spots. My solution for that is usually just to break that branch off. Ha! See? No more a problem. But really, what is that about? What is that about? Why are my tomatoes unhappy? Why is that happening? What do my tomatoes need? Come on, you guys know what you're doing. Leave a comment below. Do I need to be putting eggshells in the garden? Do I need to be... What? What do I need to be doing? What kind of love and attention are my tomato plants asking for? Since I didn't start these inside in the winter and they just took their natural course and grew from seed once it was warm enough outside, I think they are behind everybody else's tomatoes. But again, with global warming, I think it'll be fine. I'll be harvesting tomatoes at Christmas. But at least here we do see some tiny little tomato fruits forming, which is heartening. And there's some flowers, which means more will be coming soon. There's some more down there. My little Nevi is not wild about tomatoes, but Autumn loves this. And Neve actually does love to come out here and help pick them. There is nothing better than coming out and picking fresh fruits and vegetables from your own garden in your own backyard. So what's shaking zucchinis? When are you going to produce me some fruits? You're supposed to be extremely prolific. I'm ready to make some ratatouille. I'm ready for some zucchini bread. Along the fence line here, I had my sugar snap peas and some green beans. And we harvested a lot. And then... A groundhog came along who decided to bypass the trap and he chewed on my sugar snap pea plants and chomped them way down and it was really upsetting. But weirdly enough, a lot of them are coming back. Look down here, there's a lot of new growth and new growth on the stems along the way. These were eaten way back and there is new growth. So just as I was about to say, I'm hoping for another harvest of sugar snap peas, I'm seeing one right here. Now these are Neve's favorite. You can see the dead leaves from before and then you see this new growth sprouting up. That's a green bean plant. So at the back of the strawberry patch, we have some blueberry bushes and they did bear some fruit and we picked blueberries. It was exciting. It, not as many as I would have liked, but it is what it is. I have a few more raspberry bushes over on this side of the garden. 
This is where we originally planted them. And we planted them early in the spring before the giant oak tree up above had borne its leaves for the season. So when we planted these raspberries, it was a very sunny area. And then the oak tree decided to bear leaves and we realized what it is we were for putting the raspberries in the shade. And this area is so grown up with weeds. This is just a major disaster area of the yard that I need to get to. But the raspberry bush is doing quite well and it has also borne fruit and we have picked some raspberries here. And there's one little raspberry there right now. Now here's a little side of the house garden area that used to be nothing. It just used to be a little crap heap with a bunch of weeds. And I turned this into a garden a year or two ago. So, I have some flowers over here. I'm going to water this as soon as I'm done with the video. And then I also planted pots of wildflowers. But last year in these pots, I had tomatoes. So again, we had the same effect of fruits dropping, blurping open, leaving their seeds behind, and then tomato plants sprouted right out of the brick. So I have that one and this one, which looks like it's gotten chewed on a little bit and that little guy, which I think is a tomato, and this big guy, which I know is a tomato, and he really needs to be staked up. When they were little, I thought about pulling them up and transplanting them, but then I thought, as an experiment, it would be really interesting to see how well they do growing out of a brick path. I like to see how nature overcomes what man hath wrought. I don't have a staking system for this little sucker right now, so I'm just gonna lean it up against the rack that holds the croquet mallets. And when these other little ones get bigger, I'll figure out something for them. I had a similar situation here in my front flower bed. I had some pots of tomatoes here last summer. Same deal, they dropped some tomatoes, left their seeds behind, and some little baby tomato plants started to grow up. But with these, I transplanted them over here into this pot, into this area of the front garden by the front gate. I planted wildflower seeds in these pots, which is why they're so tall. But I also have petunias in there that self-seeded from petunias of years gone by. These are all little tiny petunia plants. I didn't plant any of these. These are from the seeds that the petunia flowers dropped in previous years. Same with this petunia down there. The other flowers down there I planted, but that petunia is just from seeds that dropped before. I love plants that self-seed. I don't like my weeds that self-seed. They're very good at it. But I like my flowers and my vegetables to self-seed. Well, that's about it for the garden update for the moment. The camera has shut off about a dozen times during filming this because of the high heat. It just doesn't want to stay on. So I'm going to sign off now. I look forward to all of your comments below telling me what I'm supposed to be doing because I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. So help me. I just like to throw seeds on the ground to let nature take its course. But evidently there's a little bit more to this vegetable gardening than I'm aware of. Comment below. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed. I'm not sure why this video would make anybody want to subscribe. Maybe just out of sympathy for the woman who does not know what she's doing in the garden. Share on social media and I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye. Have a great day. Stay cool. I got to water these plants now. It's 100 degrees out here.